Hello, everybody, and welcome to another OSINT Curious 10-Minute Tip with me, Michael Hoffman. This is uh, Linux Skills uh, number three, and we're going to look deeper into the grep tool. Now, the grep tool is a find command that looks inside of files, mostly text-based files, on your file system. Here on my in my terminal, I've gone ahead and downloaded a huge number of files from the ghostscript.com site. Thank you to them for having their IRC chat logs huh, online and retrievable. So I ran a wget command, and I will do that in another video. Um, I ran a wget command to grab the content and store it on my local system. So I've got a bunch of different files here. Let's see, we've got over 32, 33 files here of varying sizes that we can now grab information from. Let's go ahead and look at some of these. I'm just going to type more and we'll pick one at random. Please don't there, let there be anything sensitive in here. All right, we've got, uh, this is an HTML file. As you can see, as we're scrolling down, this is uh, the GoScript channel at ircfreenode.net. And we can see that these are all table entries. So if we wanted to, we could probably open one of these up in, let's see, open it up. And we're going to go to my home directory. There's temp, go stripped, and let's open up number 24. There we go. We see it's actually a web page, an HTML page. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use grep to retrieve content really quickly from this web page that's stored locally on my system. Let's go ahead. Now, the neat thing about grep is that we can do a but uh, the same thing to a bunch of different files we can uh, look for a single word let's say that you wanted to look for the word awesome because American people use awesome a heck of a lot we can use our grep command for the word awesome and we can instead of saying look in one file then the next file then the next file we can say look in any so that's star.html file. So it's going to look, and the grep command is going to look into each one of these files, and it will pull out any file that has the word awesome in it. Then it highlights that in my terminal. We can see in the 03 HTML, in the 12 HTML, and the 19 HTML, there are entries that have the word awesome awesome in it and we can see the context a little bit um well we can see what the person typed now grep has a bunch of different features that we can use let me just show you some of my fun ones that i like the first one is getting that context let's say that we wanted to find out more about this because we're really interested in windows cluster node um so in number 19 here I'm just going to hit the up arrow. We're still going to grab for the word awesome in an HTML file, but we're going to make this 19 HTML because we're just looking for that one. And I want to get some context. So let's look at the before two lines and the after two lines. And when we get content back, we can see that here's our word awesome. Here's the Windows cluster stuff. And we can now see that Marcos W tweeted yeah i know and this other person tweeted out uh, or not tweeted i'm sorry posted some stuff and then we have more information here please check your bugs ad blocker i thought amg is faster and cheaper so we can look at the before line and the after lines now maybe we're interested to see all of the posts that robin watts actually uh posted so we're gonna go ahead and here grep and I'm just going to type in Robin underscore Watts star dot HTML. We do see that some of those, uh, some of the files do have Robin's underscore Watts. What we see is Robin underscore Watts Mac. Interesting. Well, let's look for this exact string. Uh, as you might have guessed, grep is case sensitive. So... If we look for Robin underscore Watts, that's different than if we do Robin uh, Robin Watts with capital R and capital W. See, we have a lot more of these entries coming back. We can tell it to look at things case insensitively 
by doing a dash i. And now we have both. We have Robin Watts, and we should have, if all went well, Robin Watts's Mac. Wow. Lots and lots of stuff here. We should have Robin Watts's Mac up here somewhere. Lots to scroll through. Now, here's one of the other things that we can do, which I haven't introduced, is the pipe command. Let's see that, and let's say that we do have this long out list of output, and we want to look at it page by page. Well, in a previous 10-minute tip, I introduced you to the more command. Now I'm going to introduce you to my old friend pipe. The pipe character is hitting shift, and usually it's the key above the enter key on your keyboard, and I can send that to more. Now what we see is grep does its work and then sends that output to more. More then captures one screen at a time. Now what will happen is more doesn't know anything about syntax highlighting. So we have words like Robin Watts here, but we do not have the colorization. But what we can do is look at here. This is one HTML and Robin Watts is over here. We can now scroll through and look at this page by page of content if we wanted. So that is using the more command. Now, what I want to do is let's, uh, let's go ahead and see if instead of Robin Watts, let's see if there's any emails in here. So I'm going to grep for the at symbol. And I'm going to put the at symbol in quotes just in case Ah, just in case something else was to happen uh, on the command line. Because some of the commands that we might look for, like an ampersand or a backtick or something, have commands or have special purposes on the bash command line. And so you need to escape them or uh, using a backslash or use quotes. So here we see, here's an email, till at ghostscript.com, support at artiflex.com. All right. Let's go ahead and get into some regular expressions. Now, regular expressions are things that allow us to look for patterns in content. So instead of just looking for at, I can specify to use an expression, and I'm going to look for um, any character. That's the dot. Um, any uh, one or more times, and then an at symbol, and then any character one or more times and then a dot, and then uh, let's say some lowercase a to z, one or more. Now, I've been doing regular expressions for a while, and maybe I'll do another uh, video on regular expressions, but let's just see if this works to extract. Oh, I need to do some things here. Let's see that, and that, and that. Cool, that's still too much. Hang on. Dot com. All right, so we're kind of getting it. Let's see. There we go. That's even better. So all I'm looking for is an at symbol and then some content dot com. Now we could move this from dot com. We could say dot org, dot net, and other things too. Um, dot let's see if we do uh, a to z let's try this just one more time plus no it gives us too much okay so we've got some email addresses here tech at artifacts staff at artifacts ghost ray ghost trip um this is good and we see that in front of them sometimes there's a space or a, qu a single quote or a another character so let's do this let's go ahead and say space and then a to z 0 to 9 a to z and all right so i refined the regular expression to say hey there's got to be a space in front of it and then we're looking for a to z zero to nine capital a to z um, and you can see that we now have our email addresses well let's go ahead and just extract that we only dash lowercase o only want the things that we asked for there we go so now we've just looked through all of these files and we're only extracting the email addresses. 
that's pretty handy. Now, let's go ahead and hide those file numbers. Minus H, I believe it's lowercase h. There it is. And we now can even do things like sending this over to other commands. We can send it out to a file or other things. But that's some basics on using grep using regular expressions. If you don't know what regular expressions to use, if you think that this is a little bit more complicated than you can handle, just Google or DuckDuckGo or Bing regular expression for email address, regular expression for this or that or the other, and then paste it in here and see if it works for you. All right. Well, that's it. I'm all out of time for now. Uh, please tune into our next 10-minute tip to learn more about these things. As for now, I just want you to remember one thing. Stay using curious.